Good morning. We're here to tell you today the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there's good news and bad news. The good news is that Jesus loves you. But the bad news is He's calling you to change. Yes, change. First your clothes, young ladies. Put clothes on before you leave the house. That's first things we got to do. First things first. Let, uh, you know, uh, uh, Trump was going to make America great again. I say we should make leggings underwear again. How about that? Back in the day when leggings were underwear, men knew which restroom to use. So, Christ is calling you today to come out from among them. Touch not the unclean thing. You need to remember Lot's wife. Yes, they were delivered by angels from Sodom, and she looked back. She looked back because she loved Sodom. She loved the world. That's the problem with the leaders of so-called churchianity today. They love Sodom too. They would rather be at peace with Sodom than be at peace with God. The reason you don't find peace with God is because you're too comfortable with the devil. What you need to realize is that to be loved by God is to be chastened of God. Jesus said, those I love, I chastise and I rebuke. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Revelation 3.19 so, I'm here to tell you, yes, I am uh, very narrow-minded, and I serve a hate-filled God. God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. Three to four thousand little children are murdered every day in America because people like you like to fornicate. That's the problem. The reason why they're murdering little children is because you like your Netflix and chill. Netflix and chill kills. You need to get this straight. You need to get some understanding. So, where was I? Yes, repent and believe the gospel. I'm here to let you know that yes, before you tell me, I'm going to tell you, yes, I serve a hate-filled God and I am very narrow-minded. I am very narrow-minded. I only believe what the Bible says. I only believe what God, the creator of everything, says. I don't believe what the LGBTQ alphabet mafia tells me. I'm not going to use your pronouns, but I'm going to tell you, you need to repent because God says so. God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. He hates feet that run swiftly to evil. There's six to seven things listed clearly in the Bible that God hates. You should read your Bible. Stop listening to your... God does not hate. Uh, God hates. John... No, Psalms tells us that God hates workers of iniquity. Now you have a God of your own imagination. You say that God is just very loving. He loves everybody. Well, that's sort of true. That's a half-truth. God... God so loved, past tense, the world. He loved the world on, uh, 2,000 years ago when they hung him up on the cross for your sin. But he did not love you enough to let you continue in your sin. He doesn't love you so much that he won't throw your sorry self into a lake of fire when you die in your sin. No, he doesn't love you that much because then he would be a respecter of persons. God is no respecter of persons. He laid out the rules. He's, he's written the law on your heart. And every time you rebel against the law of God... God has 
has every right to be angry with you. God, if you go so far, God has every right to hate you, to, to disregard you. Yes, and that's what he says he does. He says he hates the workers of iniquity. Why? Because you harden your heart against him and you don't do what he told you to do. He is not arbitrary. This is the love of God that you keep his commandments. They're not burdensome. Uh, yeah, because you need to get the understanding that you can love someone and still hate them at the same time. Until you can get that, you'll never really come to God. You'll just come to the Buddhist God that just loves everybody. You'll be okay with Oprah Winfrey thinking that every road leads to heaven. 